Guys, welcome to the channel. Um, I have this Orient Bambino that I'd like to share with you. This is the Generation 2, the uh, silver sunburst finished version. Uh, this is a family member of mine's watch. He's, he's in town. He's letting me check it out. And I'll be honest, I've never really been attracted to the Bambino. You know, I knew it was good value for money, but the pictures and the specs that you see online uh, they just never grabbed me, but I have to say that this is one of those watches that when you see in person, um, you come away impressed. You kind of feel a level of quality that's surprising because these watches retail, I mean, they, they sell for around $150. I think my family member paid $120 for this about a year ago, brand new. And for that money, you know, how good of a watch can you really expect to get? Uh, I have to say, though, after handling this Bambino, you can get a pretty nice watch. I mean, check out these details. Uh, this has a domed dial, which is uh, expensive and difficult to manufacture on a nice level. And you can see it kind of has that ivory silver sunburst texture to it uh, that does play with the light. It looks very nice for those applied markers and those uh, bevel Dauphine style hands. They're all polished. So you know the combination with the texture and the reflections that you get off of those surfaces it looks really sharp, especially when you when you consider that it's under this really dynamic uh, bubble crystal. Now the crystal is not sapphire; it is a mineral crystal, which is a little bit disappointing. Uh, it will show signs of wear and marks over time, and you can see this one does have some wear marks already. Uh, you know, being a, a year old, especially up here at the 12 o'clock position. I would have preferred Orient to do a uh, actually an acrylic crystal here if you're not doing a sapphire. Uh, acrylic would kind of help, you know, because this is a vintage inspired design with its dome dial, just how dominant the form is, the, the kind of delicate arcing lugs. It definitely has the vintage vibe going on and an acrylic crystal I think would, would be a little bit more true to that. But the nice thing is you can buff out scratches on an acrylic crystal much easier than replacing a uh, mineral crystal. That, that comes stock on this. So that's kind of my criticism of it, but it's a very sharp looking watch regardless. I mean, look at that logo. You can see it's an applied metal logo. The printing is very crisp on all the text and uh, it, it's sweet. This, uh, the Japanese really know how to make a great watch, especially uh, at a lower price point. So um, we have a signed crown there at the three o'clock position. Uh, we have a very nice profile. It sits comfortably on the wrist. Uh, my wrists are 7.25 inch, uh, inches, so I've got a little bit larger wrists, and I have to say that this this 40.5 millimeter diameter watch is very comfortable. Um, you have an 11.7 millimeter overall height, but um, if you look, most of that height is that crystal. Uh, the 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 top of the bezel to the back of the case pack is only about eight millimeters, so it does play smaller on the wrist, a lot smaller than what you'd think just looking at specs online. So I think that's pretty cool. Now, what are the downfalls to this watch? There's a lot of good things about it. You know, it does have an in-house movement. Yes, it is hacking, it is hand winding. And I have to say that the hand winding actually is really responsive. It feels great for a watch of the price point. I am impressed with that. But what are the negative points? I would say a big one is gonna be the case back. Now. You can see this case back is pretty scratched up and this is only with about a year of wear. Um, it's just a polished finish. It's very basic. Uh, the line isn't very crisp right here. And it's, it's going to look ugly as you wear this. So there's no denying that. But, you know, it's on the back of your wrist, so who's going to see it but you? The other negative point is it doesn't come on a very good strap from the factory. Now, I have it here on my Horween Shell Cordovan that I got from Kraft and Tailored. Uh, I love this leather strap. It's really, really nice. And I thought it looked awesome with the silver sunburst dial. Um, but this is, the, this is the leather that it comes on. Uh, it is uh, what's called genuine leather, which is the lowest grade of leather that you can buy. It's very stiff um, and I just I'm not impressed it's not tapering either so I put it on I put on this aftermarket strap here to wear and to show show you guys but um, the strap option from the factory is not good the problem is the width of the lugs is 21 millimeters so having a 21 millimeter lug width is a little frustrating because you know most straps come in 20 or 22 millimeter widths 
uh, several companies do offer 21 millimeters, but you know you can only wear it on your 21 millimeter lug uh, width watches. So that's a little bit frustrating. I think that the proportions look perfect. So maybe if Orient were to do a Gen 5, I would say, hey, just slightly scale it down, get 20 millimeter lug width, so people can ease more easily upgrade their strap because the strap option from the factory isn't that great. But overall, it's a fun watch. I mean, if you're looking for a dress watch, you don't want to spend a lot of money. Maybe you don't dress up that often. The Bambino is definitely one to check out. And my personal favorite out of the four different versions is this Gen 2 uh, with with the Dauphine hands and, and this style of indices. I, I think it looks, uh, it's just my aesthetically my favorite one. So anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Reach out if you have any questions. I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.